Good morning. December the 26th of 2017, the day after Christmas. Hope everybody had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. <clears throat> we sure did. And then uh, this morning, finishing up our last five days in the, in the Bible. Um, uh, again, having read this one year Bible from starting in January until December 31st, you've read it all the way through front cover to back cover, and it's, it's quite an accomplishment. Uh, not many people can say they've done that. Um, but anyway, I'm so proud of you guys and proud of you that have followed along all this time. Uh, we're in Zechariah chapter 9, another of the prophets. And this morning as I was reading, I read here about how, let's see, again, it's a, it's a prophecy. And it, he talks about in Zechariah 9 chapter, uh, I think it's, a ch a chapter 9, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O da daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he. Humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And um, what came to my mind for some reason on this December 26th of 2017 as I was reading is um, how many people through the ages have attempted to discredit um, not just the word, the written word, um, but to discredit Jesus and who he, who he is. They've attempted it. They've tried and tried and tried and tried to discredit the written word. There's people out there that will still say, oh, it was just written by man and it's an error and there's flaws in it. Um, and yet they haven't been able to prove that. Uh, they've tried. They've tried. The, the second closest document um, novel that they have attempted to discredit and have been unable to is the Iliad, if you do any research on it. And I didn't do any research this morning leading up to this. I'm just sharing with you again what I get as I'm reading my morning Bible. Sometimes it's random or seems random, but it really isn't random because it speaks to me. But this morning, here, here's Zechariah. And I didn't research the time frame that this is. I'm not a Bible scholar by any sense. I do this for relationship. Um, but Zechariah, way, 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 way before Jesus was ever born, reconfirms Isaiah and Jeremiah and all the prophets' prophecy of the coming Messiah and says that he will ride on, um, on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey, and it just brought up to mind um, in years past because I had some people that was in in uh, the right spirit talking to me about the validity of the Bible, the validity of the gospel, the validity of who Jesus Christ was. I did do some research way back when. Um, Chuck Missler is one uh, that I did some research. Uh, he 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 does the numbers of the Bible, just the numbers in this book. The numbers, how many words there are, how many um, T's there are, how many numbers uh, uh, themselves. Chuck Missler is a great person to research uh, the, uh, the validity of the written word, the Bible itself. And, and it's humanly impossible. He does the calculations all the way out to the point zero 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 probability that it's an error. I mean, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. And he did it at a time when that we didn't have computers. You could just plug in information on your computer and spit out the probability ratio of this, that, and the other thing. Um, but they've attempted over through the ages, they've attempted to discredit uh, Jesus. They've attempted to discredit the written word and it can't be done. It can't be done. It's just, it's awesome to me. And it's awesome to read these prophecies that Zechariah was told that he'd be riding a, um, a donkey, a colt, um, the offspring, the foal of a donkey. And then it goes on and it talks about, in Revelation, uh, once again, uh, visions that God gave to John on an island, a deserted island. And it talks about, 
um, this great woman, this woman, um, and I saw a woman, this is Revelation 17, verse 3, and he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. Oh, I'm telling you, every time I read that, it's like, okay, me too, Lord, carry me away in the spirit. And you know, he has so many times, so many times I've been carried away into the spirit. I was about this time last year, a little bit later. Um, so I'm going to say 10 months ago, I, I was sitting in a training session for the business that I own and and they're up there and they're making their presentation in the middle of people making presentations. I started getting visions and I had visions um, that was an answer to questions I'd been asking God about. And one of the visions was actually about this home that we bought this past year. Um, and it was a vision of us doing business inside this home. And I'm telling you in the middle of all these people in the middle of a training session, I wasn't even asking God at the time. I wasn't even praying at the time. I was listening intently to what I was being trained on. And whew, he took me and, and carried me away in the spirit and my mind. And I had this vision uh, that gave me the confirmation that, yes, indeed, we, we were supposed to buy this home. Um, doesn't make any sense whatsoever that we did this. No business sense that we did it. No personal finance sense. But God said. And so we did. And, and so anyway, I read this and, and, and I, every time I will, it will be, and he, and he carried me, he meaning the spirit of God, he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness. And it's, oh, that takes my breath away to know that John was, and I believe John was physically carried. I really do. I believe it. That's just my belief that he was physically carried away and was physically shown these things <coughs> because I know how powerful my visions are that I get in my head and I don't get lots of them. Uh, it's not, I'm, I'm on my way, I believe. In fact, that's part of, of what God's shown me for 2018. Um, the word bountiful uh, means an abundance of giving. And in order for me to be, to be able to, in an abundance, give, I have to, in abundance, receive from him. And I believe part of that is going to be dreams and visions. Um, I believe it with all my heart, but Anyway, um, I don't get um, lots and lots of visions yet. They're coming. Um, but um, the, when, when he does give me a vision, it's powerful. I mean, just like here I am, I don't know, 10, 11 months later, telling you I had a vision that I came back and I told everybody. I mean, I was so excited by that vision. Uh, and it was a supernatural third or fourth dimension vision that I had through my sanctified imagination of God using my mind to implant these visions. Whereas in my belief, my belief is he physically carried John and showed him physically things. And the reason I believe this is because of the power and the strength and the uh, endurance of these visions that John had. It wasn't easy to write things down back then. Right now today, we can grab a computer and type it out. We can grab a pencil and paper. There's probably not a household in America that doesn't have a pencil and paper that you can't write something out. Um, and when you write it down, it's so much more powerful. But it wasn't that easy for John um, to write it down. And, and I think it's because it was a physical thing that happened with him that it was etched in his brain and in his heart and in his soul and into his spirit for eternity, never to go away. And it's as powerful today when we read it as it was then. That's why I think it was a physical vision that was given to um, John, unlike the visions that I have, but uh, didn't mean to chase that rabbit. I'm just, I'm just telling you, but um, <clears throat> about how it impacts me and, um, and so this, this particular <clears throat> chapter in Revelation spoke to me personally again, but I think it's indicative sometimes of many of us. I have shared with you that I got saved early on, and my salvation is, is, is faith in who Jesus is. My salvation is, see, the salvation is provided whether I accept it or not, and we're all we all have salvation provided to us by Jesus Christ. He died for all, but we activate that salvation through faith, Ephesians 3, 1 tells us. So 
uh, we activate that through faith. When I choose to believe, then my salvation becomes alive. Um, it's no longer just a seed planted inside of me. It's a seed that's been watered and is now <clears throat> uh, growing inside of me. And my salvation grows and it's progressive. And I, I get closer and closer to God the more I turn to him, the more I seek him, the more I activate the faith, the measure of faith he's already given me. See, that's already a done deal too. Um, it's not anything I can do to get more faith. It's not anything I can do to get any faith. It, it, God measured the level of faith he wants every one of us to have, and it's more than enough for anything he's called us to do. And so. Um, what I got out of Revelation 17 with, and he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality, and on her forehead was written a name of mystery. Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And, and instantly I'm, I'm, I am applying this to my life as a young girl saved, full of the Holy Ghost, on fire for God. I chose one of those seven beasts, the seven heads. The, I chose one of the idols and I started... I started getting off of the narrow road, the narrow road that we have. I, I wandered this direction and I chose one of the idols. And then pretty soon I chose this idol and pretty soon this lured me and the ways of the world, you know, people pleasing was a huge one for me, wanting to be popular, wanting, it's not even that I wanted to be popular, I wanted to be liked. I wanted people to like me. I, I wanted to be a part of. I wanted to feel like I made a difference. Um, uh, but I, I chose the way of the world to do that instead of staying on my narrow path with God and doing it. And this, to me, this is the picture of my life that I believe many of us struggle with. And that is, man, I had this encounter and I met the real Jesus and he came into my heart, and I know, now I've shared with you that I know that he never left me. He was always there with me. But as I strayed and I wondered, I become this woman. And, and remember that the church is represented by a woman. The bride of Christ is a woman. So when you read this, keep that in mind, because I think that these words apply so finite that they apply to this little bitty tiny Elizabeth Inman on the face of, of planet Earth with seven billion people. The Creator created all of this, and, and I'm one out of seven billion. That's way worse than a needle in a haystack, and yet it applies directly to me. But it also applies to who may be watching the videos. It also applies to who may be reading Revelation and, and that can get the big picture of these prophecies and these visions that was given. Same thing with Zechariah. I mean, you want to talk about big picture, you know, way, you know, uh, way forward thinking. The prophecy was for thousands of years beyond Zechariah himself. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? How this can apply? What a powerful thing we have here in our hands when we're reading it in the spirit. And, and, and you know what? I read it very quickly this morning. I pushed myself this morning, ran out of time, um, and I still got this. this. This whole story today was the picture of my salvation and my getting on the narrow road of me following the idols, which is the beasts for me. Now, I'm not the, theology correct. I'm not doctrine correct. I'm just telling you how this Bible speaks to me. And it was a reminder of once I let my eyes stray and I got distracted away from the light and I let myself get distracted away, then I followed those beasts and they were there to kill me and they were there to devour me. And then I, then I took on some unrighteousness of my own and that's why I was drunk with the blood of the saints, I, the people I hurt, the things I did wrong, my wrong-rooted um, ambitions. 
uh, all of the things that happened, this is the picture of. And then it goes on to talk about those Zion and, and the Lamb and the Lamb, and the Lamb will conquer them all, for he is the Lord of lords and kings of kings, and those with him are called and chosen and faithful. And um, when I turned my eyes back to the light, see, it's all it took. It's all it took for me is, is I, I'm on the narrow and I'm watching the light. I'm on the narrow road and I'm, I'm watching the light. There's a ditch on this side and there's a ditch on this side. I, I went clear over that ditch and I followed and I turned my head clear to where I wasn't even aware that there was a light anymore. All the while, I still had Jesus in my heart. He was still protecting me and he kept me from death and he kept me from a lot of really, really bad things. Now, this is just my story. It's not everybody's story. Tom certainly has a completely different story than I have, and it's okay. But I'm just sharing with you how this book, how being faithful reading it front cover to back cover, just taking five minutes this morning, it took me less than five minutes to read this morning, and how it spoke to me and reminded me of things, and, and reminded me of how valid this written word is. It's not to replace my worship of him. That's not what the written word is. This doesn't become my God. But in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. So all in divine order, it reminded me that they've tried to invalidate this. They've tried to say it's an error and they can't do it. And then it, it was a reminder as I'm winding down 2017, and I'm working on my summary of last year, moving into 2018, it reminded me of the picture of what happened when I let my eyes get distracted. And it's the reminder that as I focus on 2018, that I'm going to be guided by the light, and I'm not going to be tempted to move my eyes off of that road so that I could get distracted. And that's just what today's reading did for me. So I hope it spoke to somebody. I hope it helps somebody, especially when we're in some of these that I'm telling you, if I just get in and I start trying to figure out the prophecies in Zechariah, if I start trying to figure out the prophecies, prophecies of Revelation, that's not where I'm at with my relationship with the Lord, not Elizabeth. There are those of you that can read these and you know what that means and you know you can apply it to the future in these profound ways and I'm in awe of you. But for Elizabeth, it's just simply my life today and how it helps me every single day. And I'm so, so, so grateful to be able to have the honor to come and share it with you guys and that any of you guys uh, would come on and watch along with me and the viewers that come on YouTube and, and subscribe to the Facebook Live and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I, I'm in awe of that. Thank you. You bless my socks off, I, I can assure you. And you cause me to push deeper into him. And I know for 2018, he wants Elizabeth. He wants more of me than I've given him. And you guys know, there's not many days in 2017 I didn't wake up and say, I'm yours. I'm yours. And yet, even though I do that and I, I, I physically say those things to, me, to him, he's telling me he wants even more of me. And I'm telling him I want him to have it. I want to completely die to self and become his more and more and more and more. And every time I read, I believe that happens supernaturally. So, Thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of 2017 and we'll talk again tomorrow.